the whole connector is melted and it was just stuck on the exhaust right after the manifold. So um, I believe we've already found our issue. What's up guys, welcome back to another video. Today we are working on a Ford F-150 2006 5.4. Customer complains the vehicle is losing power and is running in some sort of safe or limp mode. Now, everything was running fine with this car before this issue started happening. The first thing I do when I get a car in my shop is do a full scan on it and I'm getting around eight codes related to the intake, camshaft, position actuator, bank one, bank two, some other codes um, related to the mass airflow sensor, oxygen sensor, EVAP. Now this does not make sense because these are a lot of failures um, that just come up all of a sudden. Usually if you have one code that's related to an oxygen sensor or related to an intake actuator or a mass airflow sensor, it could be that the sensor failed itself. But in this case, every time I clear the codes, they all come back on right after I started the vehicle. So definitely something is going on with this car. It's taking all these systems down at once and um, I went ahead and checked all the fuses. Fuse number 32 is blown. So I went ahead and I replaced it with a 15 amp fuse. And the second I started the car, it blows that fuse again. So it tells me there's a short somewhere on one of these systems. And the best thing to do in these cases is go on ProDemand or All Data, whatever system you use, pull up the schematics of the vehicle and see how these systems are working. Are they individual, are they working together? Are they sharing common grounds or power? So let's go ahead inside, use our Mitchell Pro Demand and see what Fuse 32 is and take it from there. So here I am on my desktop Pro Demand having the schematics open. As you can see, Fuse 32 is here. If we click it and see where those distribution is going to, we have one that's going to the EVAP canister vent control solenoid. The next page takes us to ties up to S154 right here, which also go to the EVAP emission canister, variable camshaft timing, camshaft timing valve two, oxygen sensor. So pretty much we're having um, a short somewhere on this circuit that's causing that, that fuse to blow. And the approach that I'm gonna take right here is basically go first, inspect the harness visually, see if there's anything um, cut or shorted to ground or to the body and um, if everything seems fine what i'm going to start doing is disconnecting one circuit at a time and see if that still triggers the fuse or blows the fuse um, if i disconnect one circuit and it does not blow the fuse that tells me that circuit that i disconnected is where the issue is but if it still blows the fuse then i'm going to go ahead to the next circuit disconnect this one and i'm going to keep going until i find where the issue is so let's go back to the vehicle inspect the harness and um, take it from there so we're back at the car um, you have your evap one evap is over there um, if we look at the harness i don't see any damages the loom is good you want to trace and go down a little bit make sure nothing is shorted or cut we have our intake camshaft sensors here sorry this one here and then we have one on the other side as well. Nothing seems damaged here. Everything is good. What I'm gonna do right now is go to my O2 sensor and see if anything is damaged on that. So let's go under the car because I don't think I can spot anything from top here. I'm gonna go under the car and um, see if I can see anything. All right, so I'm under the vehicle right now. I'm checking the O2 sensors and guess what I found? This O2 sensor right here on bank two is completely melted and it was stuck on the exhaust and that explains the short that we have as you can see here the whole connector is melted and it was just stuck on the exhaust right after the manifold so um, i believe we've already found our issue what i'm going to do right now is order a new pigtail because i can't reuse this connector from the car side i'm going to order a new pigtail a new o2 sensor replace that seal it and I believe this should fix all the other codes. Let's go ahead. I'm going to start chopping this off and um, fix the new connector. So 
we just got the parts. We have the NTK or NGK O2 sensor, which is for bank one. And this is the upstream O2 sensor. And we got a pigtail for it because we're gonna have to wire a new connector because the one that we have is melted. So this is gonna go here and we're gonna have to wire the new connector and this is gonna fix our problem. So let's go ahead, cut off the connector that's on the vehicle right now because we can't really disconnect the connector. It's melted. I'm gonna cut off from one side and the other. I'm gonna re-weld the new connector. As you can see here, we have the melted connector that was causing the issues. Of course, I had to chop off the O2 sensor connector along with the other side from the harness. And I showed you the new pieces that we got. So that's all fixed. Right now, what I'm gonna do is install a new 15 amp fuse. I'm gonna show you where fuse 32 is. So if you look down here, right beside this relay over here, that's where fuse 32 is. It's missing right now because there was no point of putting the fuse. And now since we did the repair, we can go ahead and insert a new fuse in there. So there we are. We're gonna clear the codes right now. Quick erase. We only have one, which I believe is, um, it's gonna say something is not ready or, here, let's go ahead and go scan it. Readiness, not okay, or system not okay. Usually does that when you clear the codes and scan it for the first time. There you go, check if all systems are not complete. So let's go ahead, start the vehicle and see how she runs. And right away, I can tell by how the car is idling and RPMs is back to normal because before when I held it at like 2000, you would hear it misfiring or sputter. But right now she's holding steady. No misfires. And you can feel the power is back. But just to make sure 100%, let's go ahead and scan the car with the engine running. That way, We'll pull the exact codes. Press and release the brake pedal, turn steering wheel half a turn, release, press the overdrive, and we let it do its thing now. All right, so we just have two codes related to the engine oil temperature sensor out of code and the coolant head temperature. That's new, so I'm gonna have to look into that. But other than that, we had all the other codes go away. So we figure out the issue. We fixed the whole circuit. Now none of these circuits are going down and the fuse is not blowing. So we know that repair was done properly. Anyways, I hope this video helps for you guys. If you have any of the P codes that I listed or any of the codes that was on the screen earlier, um, this might be your issue. So go ahead and check out your O2 sensor. Maybe the harness was melted onto the exhaust. So once again, Thanks for watching and I will see you guys next time.